Education Scotland's guidelines for early reading are organised across three main areas. These are building a literacy-rich environment through interactions, experiences and spaces, developing skills for reading and building independent and engaged readers. For each of the areas pictured, we have developed a suite of videos to support professional learning. The videos have been carefully developed to align with Scotland's Curriculum for Excellence guidance. Throughout the video, some technical terms are used to describe aspects of early reading. The QR code shown on the slide will allow you to access a glossary with brief explanations of some of the terms used. Each area has been broken down into four themes. There is a video which explores each theme, identifying key messages and signposting research which supports the guidance. This video is focused on considering the five components of reading, as underlined on the slide. You may choose to watch this video in isolation, but it is recommended that the overall suite of videos is used to support a broader programme of professional learning. Early reading success is built upon the five components of reading, which are phonemic awareness, phonics, vocabulary, comprehension and fluency. Within this video, we will explore the following two key messages. The five components of reading should all be explicitly modelled based upon the child's current level of skill. Continually monitor progress across all five components in order to support learners to make meaning from texts. We will begin by considering how early reading success is built upon the five components of reading. You may notice that the five components is also referred to in some literature as the five pillars or the big five. In 2000, a national reading panel in the United States carried out a review of reading research. They identified five crucial components for the effective teaching of reading as phonemic awareness, phonics, oral reading fluency, vocabulary and comprehension. Since 2000, a large proportion of research into early reading has confirmed these findings. It is helpfully described by Alex Quigley as a crucial framework for understanding how children learn to read and how we should teach reading. And if any single strand of the five components is insecure, then a child can fail to properly comprehend what they read. This key message informs us that the five components of reading should all be explicitly modelled based upon the child's current level of skill. This should include considering how we can differentiate learning for children and provide scaffolds or strategies which may be required to allow them to fully access and engage with text. Throughout this video, we make reference to Put Reading First. This guide, designed by Teachers for Teachers, summarises what researchers from the National Reading Panel discovered about how to successfully teach children to read. In our use of this document, we seek to support educators to engage with the research concerning the five components and consider strategies for teaching reading. This video will focus on vocabulary, oral reading fluency and comprehension, as both phonics and phonemic awareness will be considered in more depth in videos of their own. We will begin by considering vocabulary. Children need to know the meaning of words to fully understand a text. As part of their recent work at the Education Endowment Foundation, Alex Reynolds states that to fully understand a text, children will need to know the meanings of the words it includes. Consistent research evidence indicates that the more words a reader can read, know and understand, the more they can develop new word meanings. As children begin to read, they will use the words they have heard to make sense of the words they see in print. The Put Reading First guidance outlines four types of vocabulary. Listening vocabulary. The words we need to know to understand what we hear. Speaking vocabulary. The words we use when we speak. Reading vocabulary. The words we need to know to understand what we read. And writing vocabulary. The words we use in writing. As highlighted by Alex Quigley, our reading vocabulary is typically much more complex than the vocabulary we speak. The Growing Up in Scotland, or GUS research, found that inequalities in expressive language ability exist upon entry to primary school, with less advantaged children already falling behind their more advantaged peers. In 2019, 
Gus used their longitudinal data on expressive language to report that inequalities appear to persist throughout the primary school, though it also concluded that social background, whilst an important factor, is not the only factor that influences language performance. Some children from the most disadvantaged backgrounds were performing well, while some children in the most advantaged groups were performing less well. Within our diverse society, many children are likely to have language experiences within homes and communities which may differ from their school literacy experience. This area is explored in the importance of oral language development for reading video and is a key consideration for vocabulary development. When planning a teaching approach, educators should build an understanding and value of children's home language experience so that vocabulary development takes account of potential strengths and helps to minimise any inequalities in expressive language experience, as highlighted in the Gus report. Alex Quigley's book, Closing the Vocabulary Gap, is a helpful source of research-informed ideas for classroom practice in relation to vocabulary teaching. Quigley highlights that explicit vocabulary teaching is important for children with reading difficulties, finding robust evidence that they benefited three times as much as those who were not given this support. Not only that, but all children also benefited from such vocabulary instruction. We will say more about explicit or direct and indirect approaches to learning vocabulary in the next few slides. In order to meet children where they are in terms of vocabulary, we can plan classroom approaches which allow for opportunities for both indirect and direct learning. Put Reading First provides a few ideas for effective classroom practice which supports the indirect learning of vocabulary. First, engaging children in daily oral language through conversations with other people, especially adults. As they engage in these conversations, children often hear adults repeat words several times. They may also hear adults use new and interesting words. The more oral language experiences children have, the more word meanings they learn. Second, reading to children. Reading aloud is particularly helpful when the reader pauses during reading time to define an unfamiliar word and after reading, engages the child in a conversation about the book. Conversations about books help children to learn new words and concepts and to relate them to their prior knowledge and experience. Third, opportunities for children to read on their own. Children learn many new words by reading independently. The more children read on their own, the more words they encounter and the more word meanings they learn. Opportunities for indirect learning of vocabulary are helpful. However, direct approaches can make a significant difference to many learners. The visual in this slide outlines some strategies which support direct learning of vocabulary taken from Quigley's book. For example, pre-teaching vocabulary, discussing the meaning of words, grouping words, comparing words, and using dictionaries to find precise definitions. Using information about word parts or context clues can also help to determine word meanings. We have also included the use of vocabulary tiers to help identify which words should be taught. These are divided into three levels. Tier 1 features high-frequency words which are common in spoken and written language, such as clock, tell and happy. Tier 2 words are relatively common words that may be used across a range of areas, but children may need some assistance to learn them, such as curve, melt and mountain. Tier 3 words are technical words linked to specific content learning, such as carnivore or triceratops. Further information about the use of vocabulary tiers by Isabel Beck, Margaret McEwen and Linda Cookin can be found by following the Choosing Words to Teach link in the signposting section. Given the Gus findings indicate that children from all backgrounds can experience gaps in expressive language, it is important that practitioners build a wide repertoire of approaches to support vocabulary learning, both directly and indirectly. This includes considering wider language experiences of all children and the importance of words or phrases which are acquired from their home and community. 
The next of the five components that we will look at is oral reading fluency. The Education Endowment Foundation define it as accuracy, reading words correctly, automaticity, reading words at appropriate speed without great effort, and finally, prosody, reading with appropriate stress and intonation. Fluency is sometimes confused with how quickly a pupil can read a piece of text. In fact, faster reading does not lead to better reading. Although we want children to be able to quickly decode text, we should support learners to read at a pace which allows comprehension to flourish. Put Reading First tells us that a fluent reader quickly recognises words and groups them together in order to understand what they have read. They can read aloud effortlessly and with expression. Fluency develops gradually over time and through substantial practice. At the earliest stage of reading development, oral reading is slow and laboured as children are just learning to break the code. Not all children will need instruction on every aspect of reading fluency. For example, we can use assessment information to identify readers who may need support to work more on accuracy, whilst others may need to focus on prosody or pace. This quote from Put Reading First highlights that fluency is important because it provides a bridge between word recognition and comprehension. When readers do not have to focus on decoding words, they can develop a greater understanding of the text, making connections to their own background knowledge and experience. It is important for educators to model how a fluent reader sounds. Christopher Such's book, The Art and Science of Primary Reading, is a guide for primary teachers which interprets research and explores some practical aspects of how children learn to read. He suggests that we should try to read clearly, emphasising the gaps between sentences and gently accentuate the natural rhythm and tone in our voice. When reading aloud from picture books, use repeated pauses so that children can start to join in and practice using good prosody. Guided oral reading instruction is when fluent reading of a text is demonstrated by an adult or peer. Children then read the text aloud with appropriate feedback. We may also include assisted reading strategies, such as the use of technology or paired reading. Children can be shown how to read to one another, listen to each other and follow the words in a text as their partner reads. Through modelling, children can also be shown how to give feedback to their partner. Research shows that learners usually improve the quality of their learning with each repetition and this improvement transfers to the reading of other texts. The Education Endowment Foundation suggests that educators routinely incorporate rich opportunities for children to sing songs, recite rhymes and learn poems by heart during story time. These can be rehearsed over and over with and without a text. Repeated reading can also take the form of children rereading a short and meaningful text a set number of times or until they reach a level of fluency. Strategies such as choral or echo reading can help to provide oral support for children with reading. According to Put Reading First, fluency develops as a result of many opportunities to practice reading with a high degree of success. Therefore, children should practice orally reading a text that's reasonably easy for them, containing mostly words they know and can decode easily. The final component which we will look at is comprehension. Reading comprehension is helpfully described by Anne Castles, Kathleen Russell and Kate Nation as a process of making meaning. Their paper further describes the process as constructing a mental representation of the situation being described in the text, linking information from the text with relevant background knowledge. In other words, this process of making meaning from text relies on our background knowledge of vocabulary, oral language, language structure and wider life experiences. Comprehension is the reason for reading and good readers have a purpose for reading and can think actively as they read. The quote on the slide, taken from the Put Reading First Guide, describes it simply. If readers can read the words but do not understand what they are reading, they are not really reading. In our planning of teaching approaches for reading, Day-to-day opportunities to develop comprehension can and should be built in alongside the other four components. 
With careful consideration, we can use these opportunities to meet young children at their current level of skill. According to the Education Endowment Foundation, successful reading comprehension approaches allow activities to be carefully tailored to learners' reading capabilities and involve activities and texts that provide an effective but not overwhelming challenge. Oral comprehension is an important precursor to reading comprehension. Reading and talking about reading should be central to everyday learning. In his book, Closing the Reading Gap, Alex Quigley highlights that each interaction between educator and child can lift the print from the page and make it better understood. We can take the opportunity to model oral comprehension by thinking out loud as we read. We can also encourage learners to discuss meaning, relating content to their own experience and linking to other texts they have encountered. Children come to school with different background knowledge and experiences. Therefore, the opportunity for dialogue is important for opening discussion about a range of ideas, allowing all children to build their background knowledge. In our video section on creating a literacy-rich environment, we signpost how we can build in opportunities for oral comprehension. Alongside ongoing development of oral comprehension, support for reading comprehension should begin from an early stage and develops even before children have mastered other aspects of reading. Timothy Shanahan has written some practical advice for educators based upon the National Reading Panel report, which emphasises that explicitly teaching strategies is most effective when there's a gradual release of responsibility between the educator and the learner. The educator models the strategy use, I do it, guides the learners to use it successfully within reading, we do it, and then learners use the strategy independently, you do it. Put Reading First suggests how we can use a similar approach to highlight meaning in all interactions with text. They begin with direct explanation, where the educator explains to children why the strategy helps comprehension and when to apply the strategy. Modelling where the educator models or demonstrates how to apply the strategy, usually by thinking aloud while reading the text that children are using. Guided practice, where the educator guides and assists children as they learn how and when to apply the strategy. And finally, application, where the educator helps children practice the strategy until they can apply it independently. Not all teaching to improve reading needs to involve written text. Danielle McNamara found that comprehension can be developed across a range of media well before children learn to read. For example, this can be done through the use of big books, images and film shorts. Wordless text can be particularly useful as it removes the potential barrier of decoding for children who are not yet decoding text independently. Short films can be another engaging stimulus through which we can develop comprehension skills. Sources for text can be found in our signposting section. The Scottish Book Trust have a suggested list of wordless texts and the Screening Shorts website contains a wide range of licensed short films linked to the Curriculum for Excellence. Reading comprehension strategies are also a crucial aspect of early reading instruction and this is confirmed by the Education Endowment Foundation. Learners benefit from explicit and consistent teaching of a range of techniques which enable them to comprehend the meaning of what they read. These strategies can be used as steps which allow learners to actively engage with the text and control their own reading comprehension. The comprehension strategies outlined on the slide are taken from Put Reading First. You may encounter classroom resources that outline different strategies or more likely that name them differently. It doesn't really matter which set of strategies we use, as there's likely to be a great deal of crossover between them, and when we engage with them, we're likely to recognise their alignment with Scotland's experiences and outcomes for literacy and English. An appendix which provides a more detailed breakdown of each strategy has been added to the signposting for this video. You may also find our national webinar and accompanying Padlet with suggested resources useful. The skill of inference is, of course, a key aspect of comprehension. 
the Education Endowment Foundation define inference as a reader's ability to use information from a text and draw on their background knowledge to understand things that are implied rather than explicitly stated. We can do a lot to support children to practice and develop their inference skills by tuning into their experiences and interests. For example, hobbies or activities outside of school could be a starting point for choosing text or aspects of interest within the local community. Thinking out loud activities provide opportunities for children to develop an understanding of their inference skills. In this example, an image from Once Upon a Picture inference collection has been used to model thinking out loud. I wonder why the girl is crying. I wonder where she's going. Talking through some details from the picture might give us some clues as to what's happening. Does this remind you of anything? Encouraging children to make connections with personal experiences or other texts they have read, watched or listened to. Why do you think the girl is crying? supports the child to infer, drawing upon prior knowledge and encouraging them to give a reason for their answer. This key message emphasises that we should continually monitor progress across all five components in order to support learners to make meaning from texts. The goal of early reading pedagogy is comprehension. If the child is insecure in one or more of these essential components or strands, then they may not be able to comprehend what they are reading. Therefore, as educators, we need to continually monitor and support young children's progress within all five components. Although both phonics and phonemic awareness have not been featured in this current video, we will briefly consider phonics in relation to the other four components. The International Literacy Association acknowledged that phonics builds decoding and word recognition skills. The more words children recognise automatically, the better their reading fluency, which has a powerful effect on their comprehension of a text. However, in this quote, they also highlight the dangers of overemphasizing phonics, whilst ignoring other key aspects of early reading. As educators, we should monitor and support progress within all five components in order to reach our ultimate goal of supporting learners to understand what has been read. Finally, as we round up this video, it is important to point out that much of what we have described can be facilitated through the wider literacy-rich environment. Supporting children's motivation and engagement with reading is critical, and this can be developed both through reading for pleasure and through the skills and knowledge developed across the five components of reading. Opportunities to develop the five components of reading should be built in alongside experiences that develop oral language, phonological awareness and concepts of print. And finally, we must build a keen awareness of the range of life experiences and background knowledge that children bring in order to tailor support for learners and build their content knowledge. These aspects are further explored in the Building a Literacy-Rich Environment through Interactions, Experiences and Spaces videos. A video overview, glossary, signposted resources and some reflective questions have been created to accompany this video. You can use the QR code on the screen to access these.